Good morning, traders, and welcome to the Bookmap Advanced Webinar. This is Bruce at Bookmap. And welcome let's... to the Bookmap Advanced Webinar. This is Bruce at Bookmap. All right, so uh, what we do in this webinar is we go through um, live analysis, uh, forward-looking. It's not hindsight. Uh, this is our education. Uh, it's based off our educational course, uh, and we do this Monday, Tuesday, and Friday at 10 a.m. Uh, we have live trading. Uh, with the idea here that you follow up with the educational course with the live analysis, ask questions, uh, and this can be applied to any uh, type of order flow or applying order flow to any type of trading. Uh, and then we have two different uh, traders here, very specific styles, uh, and the way that they trade, stocks and futures. All right, so J Trader uh, trading live uh, stocks and then uh, Scott Polsini futures uh, Wednesday and Thursday. Uh, all right, so let's go through the disclosure and then jump right in. General disclosure, all bookmap limited materials, information, and presentations are for educational purposes only and should not be considered specific investment advice nor recommendations. Risk disclosure, trading futures, equities, and digital currencies involves substantial risk of loss and is not suitable for all investors. Past performance is not necessarily indicative of future results. Okay, let's jump in. Let's take a look here. Uh, we'll jump over to the ES. Um, I've got the ES uh, U or September contract up uh, as well as the December. It is probably going to roll today, uh, I imagine. Um, I don't know which one you guys uh, prefer looking at. Um, maybe maybe go with the Z contract. I, I don't know. Um, they both look good to me. Uh, so I guess we can go with the Z contract here. So just note that. Uh, because the uh, pricing is going to look different. Okay, and let's make the dot size a little bit lower here. Okay, all right. Good morning, RG, uh, new subscriber over the weekend. Fantastic. Uh, okay, yeah, questions, uh, bring them on. Um, this is great. Um, how do you know uh, in advance when price is going to break resistance? Um, okay, so let me describe what you're what you're looking at in here. Uh, in bookmap. This is just a quick, we'll go, do a quick overview uh, and uh, and how to read this. Uh, and and really one of the one of the beauties of bookmap uh, is, uh, good morning everybody over in Discord. Uh, good to see you guys. Um, so uh, the one of the beauties here in bookmap is this is very simple and straightforward data. Okay, this is this is not uh, some sort of like a uh, you know, whiz bang indicator or anything. It's actually pretty, pretty blunt data. Uh, and that is actually the beauty of this. Uh, so we're not trying to disguise it with some sort of derivative of time, price, or volume or anything. Uh, so um, you're just looking at three elements on this book map chart. Okay, very simple, very straightforward. One is the heat map. In fact, let's, let's just turn it off one at a time here. Uh, and turn off the volume dots and bars and we're just looking and we'll even close up the indicator panel. Here we are just looking at price action. It is best bid and offer streaming over time. Uh, the beauty of this is that uh, uh, you see all of the movements here in price. Okay, see how like uh, it came up to the top of this little range and kind of uh, very quick move here and it kind of slowed down at the top of the range and then it broke out, right? Uh, and then you can see it retesting here, 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 a little bit lower here, uh, and then it went back up to the top of the range. If I overlay even a one minute candlestick chart on here, okay, this is a five minute, but let's go to a one minute. Uh, if we overlay a, even a one minute chart here, you do not see those details in here. You cannot see them because it's aggregated data within a period. So just off the bat, looking at this you're getting a lot more transparency just by looking at streaming price all right so there is no time frame here it's just streaming uh price action okay so in fact let's take the candle off uh and those little nuances in here make a big difference uh like coming up here and rejecting uh maybe uh, we don't get enough buyers up here this is where we turn on the second element on the bookmap chart okay we are getting buyers up here. We are trending higher. We're making higher highs. So let's see if the buyers can now break it here. Okay. So we, they just kind of uh, some buying here and then it's just exhausting out. So probably one more test down here, uh, maybe down the bottom of the range. We'll see. Yeah, quick move there. Okay. 
uh, retesting down here. Now let's see if we get buyers. And that's a lot of selling. Okay, this is this is ex this is a perfect example. Look at the context here. That's a lot of selling compared to over here. Even this buying in here. This is more selling here. All right. Okay, so our seller shifting the market at this point, right? We're, we were kind of looking for this breakout here, uh, potentially. Uh, and then we thought, well, no, it's starting to exhaust out right in here, right in here before this move took place. Uh, and then uh, uh, starting to think, well, maybe they'll come down and test the bottom of the range uh, and uh, see if maybe the buyers try to come back one more time. But now see what the second element here on this bookmap chart is that context here. We understand there's sellers here. Okay, pretty big selling, right? Now let's see if they try to take control of this market uh, at this point or not. So this is where we'll, we'll, you'll see how we, we'll go through this process and understand that sellers took control here for this very small time frame. Okay, I mean buyers are still in control in the bigger picture here, but in this very small time frame, sellers just took control. Okay. Now they might get upended uh, by buyers, uh, but uh, uh, we won't get into the details in here. We'll go we'll go through this this process in here, uh, but I'm just um, going over what bookmap is showing uh, and understand this context now between price action and the nuances and the volume within those uh, uh, that price action. Okay, that's going to give you a lot of insight just alone. Uh, this is going to give you a lot of insight, more than, than your market delta charts, uh, because that's still going to be an aggregated bar of data. Uh, it will show you very precisely where the volume is trading uh, and how much. Uh, we have a graphical representation of it. Okay, so I anyway, just two elements here and already getting a lot of information or a lot of context of what's going on in this market. Okay, see how the buyers are, see the buyers above where they dropped it here. Right, so if we're going to upend these sellers, they got to get back up here on some size, and they got to break the high. Okay, so we'll see if they they try again here. Um, so, so there we have just two elements, right? And we're just with the and they're very very simple. The red dot is a market sell order hitting the bid. The green dot is a market buy order lifting the offer. All right, and I know for everyone, a lot of guys on here. Uh, uh, you know, you're, you're looking at this and you already know all of this. Um, this is just a, a quick review, uh, but we're going over the live order flow as well. All right. So uh, now where's the other side of the trade though? Okay. What is the context there? That's where the heat map comes in. Let's put it on the chart. Okay. So this is a period of rollover right now. It's kind of difficult to read the, the, um, the heat map in here because there's different players doing different things in here. They're rolling from one contract to the next. Okay, so uh, you'll see this kind of uh, um, activity in the order book. Uh, it can be very tricky sometimes. Uh, if we zoom out though, um, we can look at the bigger picture here. Bigger picture is there's high liquidity up here, and we're just going to go through the facts. Okay, then we'll get then we'll get into uh, RG. We'll just go through the facts here, what it is, and then we'll go through how to read it. All right, so. High liquidity on the offer up here, okay, limit sell orders. We trade into them and through them, and they also flip. Uh, they were on the offer, now they're on the bid, okay, above 41.20, and we see also at 25 here quite a bit. Uh, up here uh, at 41.40, quite a bit of liquidity as well, All right? So we know where the sellers are, they're up here. We know where the buyers are, they're down here, All right? So uh, now when we get into the context of the heat map as well, uh, it's not that it's going to hit these areas and then bounce or whatever. It's the context. What is who's got more uh, 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 power here or potential? Uh, how does the heat map or you know uh, in an auction? Think of this as an auction, and think of this. Uh, these are these are players down here bidding, and if there's a lot of people bidding, what happens to price? That's what the context we want to read. Maybe sellers want to deal with these guys. Uh, or maybe they don't. Maybe it repels. They, they're, they're kind of chasing. Uh, and price keeps on going away and they keep chasing. Right? That's the context we want to read here. Uh, and we'll, and uh, RG, um, let me show you where the... Um, uh, go to our YouTube page here. And then scroll down here. Go to bonus materials here. And go to um, uh, order flow... Or I'm sorry, book map educational course. Click here. Okay. This will bring up uh, our four-part educational course. Start with parts one and two. 
All right, this will go through what bookmap is showing uh, and how to read this context. And we're going to do it again and again and again. Okay, understanding who's in control, who's moving this market, uh, and um, uh, where that might, uh, we see also the pivots uh, or disruptions in that um, uh, price movement. Okay. All right. So let me see here. You watched all four of them already. Excellent. Okay. All right. Let me get to more questions in here. Okay, you're looking at the 6B. Uh, uh, Poria. Yeah, we can take a quick look. 6B. Rhythmic. CME. I haven't looked at the 6B in a long time. Uh, I don't know if it's rolled as well. Sometimes they roll slower. Um, but uh, let's put it in and let's, let's take a look here. Yeah. Yeah, I don't think this one's quite ready yet. Let's try the uh, U contract. Now they both look pretty bad. Yeah, so this liquidity traded, all right? So very high liquidity in here. And look, the transactions took place, okay? So right in here, you can see it trading right into it. You can see in here trading right into it, all right? 203 contracts right there. All right, so uh, yeah, yeah, that's... Uh, now, this is the context, though you know who who won this battle here or it's not really a battle it's just these are limit sell orders they wanted to be sellers they got what they wanted there's just more aggressive buyers okay green dots are market buy orders and the size of it shows how much okay well, what, where were they able to move it they were able to move price to the top of the range here okay so it gives us some insight to that uh, we're above the 117 figure here okay just just above it <coughs> by a little bit here by a few pips Okay, so uh, uh, anyway, that's uh, that's the context here, right? So it looks like we might get a, a retest back down to here, this uh, 91 uh, area, and uh, let's see uh, what happens if we if that ha once we get down here, right? So let's just take a look here, right? So right now, look at them on the offer. Now the question is, is see see the question here, it going through this process is, do we see sellers come in? There, there's a lot on the offer here. But do we see sellers? The reaction it, price went down a bit. We don't see a lot of selling now. Okay, so I, looking at that context, unless we come back down here and see sellers at 117, they are they seem to be buying above 117, and we just saw them trade into it. Okay, great. Now can they trade up to these guys here, at uh, 05? Okay, and then up to here at 9 to 10. Okay, because there seems to be more buying pressure by the aggressors than there is limit sell orders to absorb all of that buying pressure right now okay that's the context that we're looking at at the moment right so that's uh, kind of how to read and, and start to understand uh, appetite of uh, some of these uh, traders in here uh, how much uh, do they really want uh, uh, these these um, limit sell orders here okay Stops and icebergs are on the chart here. Oh, okay. So you want to see it down here. Got you. Yeah, we also have the hero indicator here. Guys, okay, so here, here is our... <laughs> I, I hate to miss this because we're here for the live analysis and, and for reading these moves. Uh, and, uh, you know, we saw the we saw the, in here that, that selling come in. Uh, this is where the, those... And we saw them being tested a few times in here. But look who won that. There's no question, right? We're going higher. Uh, and uh, uh, we just saw some selling coming in here. They're being stopped out, it looks like, here with the red line. Uh, and um, 
Yeah, maybe we'll get a kind of, let's see if we can get a bounce maybe off of this 34.75 here. Uh, and again, looking for more buyers here. And to trade it back up into like uh, this 38 and, uh, and 39.40 area here. Okay, liquidity's up here at 40. We don't know if buyers are going to break through or not, um, RG, but uh, uh, you can you can start to look for it, like uh, uh, like we were just covering here in that 6B, that there was more buying pressure, not this one. Right, it was the U contract. Yeah. Yeah, we don't know, but it, it, this is where we, we have to read it in here and get a feel for it. Right, that they wow, they traded into this. Okay, did they trade through? Yeah, a little bit, but they pulled back immediately. Here, it's possible if you see a lot of sellers, like a big red dot, it's possible for them to take it down. They didn't. There was more buyers back up above when we when we test up into these higher levels of liquidity. Okay, here we we're even reading it in here. We're looking at do we see a lot of sellers? We didn't. Right. So uh, now we're starting to see a bit here, and there's some exhaustion there on the buy side. But let's see if we can get back up here to this O2 and get more buyers here. If we do, okay, enough, okay, kind of a green dot about that size. If we do, I think we can come up and trade O5. Right? It's exhausting out right now. There's no transactions here whatsoever uh, in this little area here. Okay, there's actually a few sellers down here. Okay, but looking, let's see if we get them. Let's see if we get our buyers up here at 0.2. Okay, and then let's see if they can go for 0.5. All right, so anyway, that this is the, the process, it, or you know, one way to look at it and read it here um, uh, by looking at the, uh, the liquidity and, and the, the context between the aggressors in here. Okay. I mean, there, other times it, it hits you over the head. Like if there's just a ton of buying in here, they're going to trade into it and through it most likely, most likely. But we need to see that unfold here. Okay. So if you see, for example, a, a lot of uh, buyers come in after maybe, you know, sellers get trapped down here, um, you know, and this is kind of at a bottom of a range, you can look for them to trade up into and test uh, this area here. So, you know, there now you're starting to get in trading strategies, trading to that liquidity. Okay, so it's one thing to consider and look into and study. Uh, you know, <coughs> so, for example, let's say you're a range bound trader. Uh, maybe you're a volume profile trader, for example. Bottom of the range, uh, you're looking at your profile. You see those buyers come in, look for them to trade it back to the middle. You've got a beautiful target here with high liquidity. All right. Now, if they can get, if this, let's suppose this is a point of control in here. Okay, and is it? Yeah, it is even before those transactions, right? At least, you know, for the data I have in here. So if there's buying above this little area in here, okay, well, that means price, potential price exploration to the upside, uh, maybe up into our 10 level that we talked about uh, before, okay? Oh, we just got there. Oh, yeah, yeah, we, we, we were there, and then we we're looking for this. Yeah, exactly. Okay, so we got up here, and then we're looking for this in here. We're looking to see them try to retest it back up there. Okay. Yeah, Jack, be nimble. It, exactly. It, it Well, if you can read the context well enough, it's, it's like you're, you know, you're pretty sure. You can be, that's the beauty of it, is that you can be, um, a lot more sure uh, that price will trade or test an area. Now, we never know that. We never know that. Um, but, uh, you know, all of a sudden someone come, might come in and just totally disrupt the game. And we've seen that so many times. Larger player comes in and throws in just tons of liquidity. Or maybe it's some sort of algo that just shoots price down very, very quickly. Uh, and, you know, our whole uh, uh, idea uh, is is you know thrown thrown out the window. Now here we are at the 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 six B here. Look at them trading. See, going for ten, looking for ten. All right, looking for ten. 
right? Higher probability we're going to go to 10 now because we see the buyers starting to come in here. Anyway, let's continue on. Um, and uh, yeah, I don't like RG get really good at reading this context. It's it don't don't think that uh, ah, it's some sort of like you know uh, green light red light system. Uh, it's all probabilities, uh, and uh, it's it's all about reading this context in here. So for example, look at it. see how they're kind of on the bid underneath here. That's good. See how this guy is staying in the book here. Usually when we come up here, they start to pull. He actually did pull a little bit in here because the heat map changed, right? From orange to, to yellow. Okay, so now we can read that context. Does this guy really want to be a seller up here? And so far, so good. He's pretty much, you know, staying in the book here, 195 contracts. All right, so um, uh, yeah, it looks like he wants to be a seller. Yeah, Chicago. Um, uh, I agree. To, I mean, the liquidity is uh, very, very different during rollover, uh, and it makes it a lot harder to read. Guys, I'm just gonna I'm gonna close the the ES here for the U contract if that's okay. Good morning, Rob. Um, <coughs> Uh, Bert, you, it, it's probably the rollover um, th that you see the difference in, in price. I'm, I'm sure. Guys, you can get really good at, at spread trading during rollover as well. I mean, there's all sorts of things to do. So many different different ways to trade. All right, I'm going to close that up. And we're on to the Z. Yeah, uh, let's see here. The, the 6 um, B, I'm going to close that one. Yeah, I mean, we, do, we need to see if they're going to absorb it or not. Right, like uh, right now, you can see that the look look what happened to our buyers looking pretty good in here, and then just you know completely kind of fizzled up here, and we just see some back and forth right now, but you know we're reading in here we had the buyers, okay, uh, we had the the bid underneath here, which is this is another thing we look for, uh, and uh, they're even adding more in here, and they just can't can't seem to get buyers interested again to to get them up to ten. Okay, so we rotate all the way back down to where we were previously. Now, I would look for a bounce off of here uh, and see if, like, this is kind of the retest. Uh, here's why. Um, this is not a really good example, but, you know, this is where we're seeing our buyers in here. Here, here, you know, here, right, lifting it. So this would be here, our line, retest back to it, and let's see if we get buyers again. To come in so we're looking for buyers here at 05 right now okay this is one of the things about I'm you know I'm not not the biggest fan of the currencies um, but uh, uh, they, they take a while it's large a lot of larger players in here um, that are um, you know using this as the way they should be for for hedging so we got up a tick here, but we now we see some um, some sellers up here. So anyway, maybe some back and forth at the moment. We get buyers up here at 06, 05, 06, and then I'm looking for 10. Okay, bid's pretty good again here. So this is a pullback. All right, let's move over to the uh, S&P and see what's going on. Uh, the 6B is the uh, the British pound uh, E-mini contract, okay, pound dollar. How does it relate? Oh, God. Um, it, well, it's, you know, it's dollar-based. Uh, dollar 
so you know and uh, the dollar's been super super strong uh, lately so and it ha they all relate they all relate so <laughs> you, you know for example I, I I do like looking at the 6e um, which is you know the most most traded is the euro dollar uh, and then how does that relate to stock indexes for example Okay, Matt. I mean, uh, correlations is such a great way. I, I, I think, um, you know, I, I personally really like it. Look at correlated markets to see what's moving. Uh, and that also can give you a lot of insight to what's going on. Okay, because all of these things are related. Uh, your interest rate uh, products, your um, currency products, your stock indexes, your individual stocks that we have here you know, can be leading indicators uh, in here. Okay, so well, anyway, we're still we're still bullish until we see something different here uh, <coughs> uh, in the ES. Now, um, let's see here. We might they might just be coming in here, retest right back down here to the bottom of this range or top of this range in here. All right, so let's look for that. This is what I'm looking for. If the sellers can drop it into about here, and that would be about. Uh, 31 and a half or so. Okay, so. All right, and, and let's let's take a look here now. I, I just want to, I'm going to mention this, I think, and then we'll come back and revisit this. Um, we'll talk about distribution and accumulation. Uh, this would be more like distribution. Uh, we have buyers coming in. And we have a lot of selling in here too. Okay, buyers up here, some sellers in here, sellers in here. Uh, it looks like there's more buyers than sellers in general. Uh, we can put this within our chart range here. Okay, there we go. Uh, we can look at our imbalance indicator here. So yeah, a little bit more selling actually. Okay, these big transactions in here. It's kind of interesting to, to note. Okay, we can also look at cumulative volume delta. I know you guys love that one. So uh, let's look at that range, this range in here. There's more sellers, okay? There's more sellers in here, All right? So this, you know, could be kind of uh, uh, our uh, distribution, okay? So uh, uh, we'll see though, we'll see. And this is where cumulative volume delta can really be um, problematic in here. If we get enough buyers up here at 35, I think we can probably break this level here and come back up to here at 37 and three quarters, 38, uh, and then finally 40 here. Yeah. Anyway, it, I don't. We're looking for that scenario in here. Um, we're still bullish until we see something different, like like I was mentioning. But uh, uh, you know, there's a few things in here that that keep us kind of. From, from making this like a, a more, a higher uh, probability uh, move here. And the, the what it is is the bid in here. See how it's all dark in here? So sellers can pretty easily move it down here to 32 and a half. Buyers can easily move it back up here to 35 and a half or 35 and three quarters. Okay, and it can bounce around in here very, very easily. See how the sellers can do that? Just move it right back down like this. Okay, so yeah, we don't we don't really like that. Um, you know, we're looking for buyers at this top edge here and see if they can like uh, kind of push it uh, back up in here. But uh, uh, just because it <laughs> there's not a lot on the bid here, sellers can drive it right back down, uh, and and buyers can drive it right back up. Okay. Yeah, let's see if they do that. Uh, right right back up here to 35. You know, just uh, just looking for a kind of a range bound uh, move here. Let's see, buyers here, and let's see a move it now. That should be enough. Again, and why I say why enough in here? Okay, the the context. 
Okay, we, we're starting to see more buyers in up here. So they can move it back up here. They've got enough buying pressure to move it up to 35. Not, not, didn't follow through on that uh, whatsoever. So we can take a look again here at some of these ranges in here. Okay, that that was, uh, uh, you know, I shouldn't, I shouldn't have been looking maybe at 35 here, but uh, instead, kind of the bottom of this range here. Okay, nice retest to that, uh, and um, uh, then we have a new range in here established. Okay. Okay. Here's a, here's our move to you know originally back at I think was it this point or maybe this point in here we're looking for the potential for the move back down to here uh, to bounce off. Now this is a little bit bigger picture to bounce off of this uh, and uh, or at least come back and test it. Okay. Now let's let's read the uh, the market here at this point. All right, so we kind of left off here with that distribution idea in here, reading buyers and sellers within here, and we knew there were more sellers in here. Okay, even even cumulative volume delta was showing that. Uh, you can ac access the VIX uh, as well, Volpro, um, but um, uh, I do not have access to it at the moment uh, in Bookmap. Okay, so here are buyers coming in off of this area. It went a little bit lower. Okay, but see, see the buyers come streaming in like this. Okay, now watch this. Now they should be able to move it up to here to 36. Um, that's just a lot of buying, and we should see a stop run in here. We can get rid of cumulative volume delta. There's our beautiful stop run in here. So a lot of stops being triggered. Okay, looking for a continuation here is a lot of buying. Okay, kind of see how that kind of disrupts things. Now we need to see they they just they need to step up here. Okay, retest back up here to 35, or I'm sorry, 34 and a half, and then we need to look for that breakout. Boy, a deep pullback. Deep pullback all the way back to here where it kind of broke out from. You can even see the little range in here below our, our line. Okay, here. All right. Okay, this is last gasp for those buyers. They, they need to come in here. Okay, if we see sellers down here, likely it's already happening. Likely we're going to get our move lower and now the target is here okay at uh, at 26 26 and a half all right so a little little flip flopping back and forth in here trying to gauge like who has who has more um, more power here to move the market who's in control ok 
Okay. Now, see how this, we can look at the, the dots in here. We can look at the bars. See how this, this was a lot of buying, right? Well, now look at the selling, how it is dwarf that buying. All right. So this is a battle in here. And uh, we can start to, we'll see. I mean, maybe, maybe we're going to get more, uh, you know, big, big uh, gr uh, green bar and big green dots right now, right here. Uh, and try to come up here and then try to break out into 40. So as it is though right now, it looks like there is more selling. Oh, there is more selling. It doesn't look like it. There is more selling. So, uh, and they, they broke the, down below our line here. So I'm looking actually for more sellers here to try to drive it down to our 26 and a half level here. Okay, just, just so you guys know, I mean, just because of wh what we read here in the context, okay, there's more sellers in here. Okay, that buying in here was really kind of a, um, a, a red herring. Okay, let's see it sellers. Let's see the push through down to our level. They've got it. And I mean, uh, they kind of exhausted out a little bit here, but still, still looking for it. Still looking for our sellers here. And then uh, maybe 26 and a half is a little too low. Well, now, now the liquidities, they're kind of pulling, pulling some of that liquidity, adding it a little bit lower here. So yeah, we'll still stick with our 26 and a half. You can see the liquidity lining up here at 27. Let me get on to saw different versions of the book map. What's the difference between them? Okay, so um, yeah, sure. That's a, that's an easy one uh, to go through. Uh, there's book map global and global plus for futures and for stocks. The the book map digital is only for um, uh, digital currencies. All right. So the, there's the digital version which is free uh, and for all. Uh, and it connects to um, one digital currency for free in a live market, and that connection is free, so the data is free. Uh, and then also the um, <coughs> there's a delayed feed for stocks and for futures. All right, so it gives you a good overview if you want to just look at Bookmap and try it out. Um, if you want more than that, it depends on what you're trading. Okay, Global and Global Plus, they will connect to all markets, crypto and um, now, they connect to these markets, but you got to find the right data provider. Um, but uh, and we're, we are not a data provider. Okay, so uh, yeah, it, let, me, let me go to that pricing page and I'll just go through this. Okay. All right, so, and let's take a look at keep price open here. Still looking for our move lower. Um, but uh, go to the pricing section here so this one's free this one's for digital currencies only this is for and you can see it here stocks futures crypto stocks futures crypto now the difference between global and global plus if you scroll down you see how the add-ons in here okay that's what you get with global plus okay there's a lot of add-ons being able to trade from the chart uh, all of these add-ons like we looked at that imbalance indicator 
Uh, we haven't looked at the sweeps and absorption or dome pro or execution pro, but uh, you get all of these with the uh, global plus version. Okay, global and also the one click trading, trading from the chart. You will not get that with global. All right. So it's more for just data visualization. And that's yearly. This is monthly. There's also lifetime in here if you want to purchase it for lifetime. All right. So uh, I, I would recommend trying one of these um, for the month. And uh, you will need data. If you're a futures trader, you will need to connect to a data provider uh, that we uh, support. So go to connectivity here. Uh, and then in futures, we connect to all of these different data providers. For stocks, we connect to um, basically um, DX feed uh, and Omni feed. And for crypto, these are all free, but we connect to all of these different exchanges here. No, it's not uh, possible to get the um, um, stop uh, stops an iceberg indicator on Thinkorswim. That's not rhythmic data, so uh, it's not offered. Uh, I don't think they've they've built out that functionality uh, either. Um, I mean, they're not going to unless they offer rhythmic. Okay, he's taking his time, sweet time here. Um, <coughs> we're back up to our line here. And it's just not a whole lot of buying still. Now, you know, this is rollover period, and, and uh, uh, it doesn't have to be rollover period. The, 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 I'm still looking for more sellers to take it down. Okay, I, but, uh, you know, we got to go through all the different scenarios and what these things look like. Okay, so if we if we get some buyers up in here above our line, doesn't matter if this is a low volume pullback. Uh, you know, here's here's the big volume here, uh, and then if it's a low volume pullback up to here, if we get buyers back up above the area, that's what matters. And then they'll likely take it back up to top of the range here, and then maybe back up into you know top of this range here, and then 40. Okay, but uh, we don't see that yet. We don't see that scenario unfolding. We're still um, looking sell side here. Okay, down to 20. We said 26 and a half. And, uh, it's, they're really here at 27. Uh, David, you're in here. It was uh, suggested that you do a, a, a webinar with us, so uh, I'm throwing that out there. Put you on the spot. David AMS. Yeah, even this here. So we, we are starting to see those buyers back up above here, uh, above our line here. But, uh, uh, you know, again, I, it, it just doesn't look like a whole lot here. Uh, if, we, if we saw really, uh, you know, big green dots up here, that would be something different. We're not. So still not really, don't think much of it yet, even though it's breaking the trend line here. There is one caveat on this. Uh, we were looking for that move to the bottom of the range. The one caveat is just point of control in here. 
Okay, just uh, these little areas, these little uh, kind of high volume nodes in here. That's what kind of is kind of bouncing off of that, but um, there was just more sellers than buyers in here. Yeah, this uh, you're you're having a is a grinding day here. You're having kind of a tough day. Um, yeah, I mean we're not really you know we're trying to kind of gauge um, you know one one way or another in here, uh, and uh, it is tough uh, in rollover. I mean, and, and basically to be honest, like in, in these kinds of days here, we we really need to see something, uh, <laughs> and um, uh, something that that has some distinction to it uh, for this market to move else it this this is very you know very typical during these rollover periods there's a lot of chop uh back and forth in here yeah yeah good trading david guys in in youtube over there uh yeah he's just uh showing some charts in here so um you may want to jump over to our Discord. Uh, Shall 77, yeah, lifetime is a one one time payment um, for lifetime access, All right? So there is something nice with the, um, if you get global uh, <laughs> life, um, uh, you 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 can upgrade uh, to um, a global life uh, global plus lifetime. Okay, and just pay the difference. Yeah, Jose, I'm not into fibs. Don't look at the fib levels. Um, uh, look at the order flow levels. Uh, if you like your fibs, look at, you know, I, we always kind of suggest look at look at the order flow around your fib levels. Uh, that's the way to go, right? So if if you like your, you know, uh, uh, sixty one point eight, you know, um, uh, retracement, then you know look look for something around those areas that that helps you confirm, gives you more insight. Yeah, no, Adam, we don't have any sort of like kind of global plus just for micros. But uh, yeah, you might want to check out that the uh, edge clear. Edge clear offering. All right, let's see those sellers come in now. We've got a bunch of trap buyers up here. Um, we see the selling coming back in here. So now we're now... You know, it, it was grinding up here and we just wouldn't convinced by these buyers in here, but the sellers look con pretty convincing. So I'm still looking for this, well, our 26 and a half, but it's really 27. The liquidity is there. We'll go through this move in here because we're, we're going to take this as kind of a fractal approach uh, and then we'll just clear all the drawings for the moment. Uh, and uh, this is what I want to cover. Uh, and we, we kind of read it on the, this, we're bullish, you know, until we see something different. And then we started to read this as possible distribution up here. We knew there were more sellers in here than buyers. 
uh, in general. Uh, you know, here are buyers, here are sellers, here are some buyers, here are sellers, here are more sellers, making lower highs in here, more sellers here, right? So, uh, and this is kind of where they took control, basically. Uh, even though we were trending up, right? Here are the sellers, okay? Here are the sellers, uh, even in here, here are the sellers. Okay, so we're just just noticing, uh, you know, where they are, uh, and then look look again here. Okay, even though we drew in our trend line and all that kind of stuff, this is where the sellers are. Okay, up in up in this area here at 34 and three quarters, up here at 34. Now this is of course we're looking at hindsight, but I should have marked it up earlier. Um, I I never got to the process of doing this right here. What I'm doing now. Okay, that's what we're looking for because we know that you know this is on these time frames at least this is where the sellers are in control okay and moving that market lower and here they are again okay so we're almost to that 27 level still looking for it uh, and let's zoom out a little bit let's take a look at some of the uh, kind of auction market theory uh, it kind of blazed through this area in here and see how it auctioned in here. Okay, it's kind of scattered all over the place. So, uh, yeah, I'm looking for sellers to try to, I'm looking for these sellers to try to reach down into that area and try to auction down here and, 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 and explore it and test it. Okay, are they going to accept? Is it going to reject? Okay, there's our 27 level, guys. That was a long process. Still looking for lower, though. Okay, yeah, Traders Traders Global, you're looking at the uh, micro NQ. Sure. Uh, you know, guys, we have a really nice feature uh, in Bookmap for uh, trading off of the E-mini chart, but you can execute your trades uh, into um, a micro uh, contract. Okay, so... Um, uh, yeah, I'll show you where you can get that. Uh, open up your trade control panel. Uh, you need to be, see I'm in simulated mode right here. Okay, you need to be in real trading mode. All right. And then when you turn on your uh, trade control panel, it's this one in here. See, it says uh, target instrument. Okay, you need to uh, click on that and then you'll select the uh, micro product here and then you start. Okay, so... <coughs> That will allow you, and you'll you'll get a, a notice here. A window will pop up and say, like, you are now trading from the the um, the E mini chart here, uh, but your trades will be routed and transact into the micro product. So the advantage here, and it's a nice advantage, you can react very quickly to liquidity in here. That's much better in the E mini, which is traded quite a bit more, uh, and you can look at these levels in here. Uh, and um, uh, then make your trading decisions based off of that, right? And and exer and have them executed in in the micro. Okay, that's a that's a real nice edge. You don't have to like flip back and forth or anything like that. Uh, you just trade off the e mini. Okay, so uh, anyway, yeah, I I really think I encourage you try it out. Uh, I think you'll find quite a nice edge off of that. It's a, it's a great feature. Right now, it'll work with any of these micro products here. Okay, it doesn't matter which um, data provider either. All right, guys, we are still looking for that move lower. It's still going lower here. Uh, we just noticed who's in control. All right, and we're going we're going with it. All right, so we we kind of read this whole thing up here. Uh, when we started the webinar, we're looking for 40, right? This looks great. Should go to 40. Then we started to see all this back and forth in here. And then, you know, we started to change our mind. OK, 
Okay, this is you know we're talking about here is and trying to keep it really simple because the markets are so confusing. It can be. Uh, just try to keep it really simple. Uh, and uh, we're going to be you know using Wyckoff a little bit here. Uh, so if you're a lot of traders are very familiar with Wyckoff uh, and his methods. If you, if you're not, look it up. Just do a Google search. You can look it up in you know God. He's not only in in um, He's in uh, Wikipedia, uh, and you can read about him there, and there will be other references. You can look on Vestipedia. You can look up uh, wherever. Uh, but the kind of things that he's talking about are precisely what we're looking at here, precisely. This is, the again, I think RG was talking about, well, how do I read and use Bookmap? Well, here, here you go. Like, we just went through distribution uh, up here. right? Now, we know we're right because we got the follow-through to the downside, but we read it. And we were looking for our sellers to come in. I was, I was looking for a bounce off of 31. Uh, and we did get a bounce off of 31. But then sellers came in and pushed it through. And we then at this point here, we knew that they were in control. We we're looking for the move down to the bottom of this range here. And it took a long time to get there. Okay, And we did note that you know they even came back above 31. Traders uh, you know, were able to auction it back up here. But the sellers remain in control at this point here and this point here, All right? We see the more sellers come in. We're looking for our 27 and lower. So we just traded down to 24, All right? So, uh, uh, and you know, we're just reading the order flow in here and putting these pieces together to look for these moves to unfold. Yeah, head and shoulders uh, is a great distribution pattern, uh, M. And this is this is where it's I'm fascinated by it. Like you'll see like uh, so many different variations of a head and shoulders, for example. And really, I, I'm only using head and shoulders as because everyone knows what it is. OK, but it's, it's distribution and it's the order flow that we want to read. We don't we don't care about it being a head and shoulders. That doesn't matter. Uh, now, this is a little tricky in the sense that typically we see high liquidity on the offer getting filled on the first shoulder. Then we see the price go a little bit higher. Sometimes you see very high liquidity up here as well getting filled. Okay, maybe it even kind of pops through a little bit, but then it rejects. Okay, sometimes you don't see any liquidity. All the liquidity was here. Sometimes there's very little up here. Uh, you can see the buyers come in, that uh, sellers pound it right back down, or buyers exhaust out. Okay, look at the double top. Here's <laughs> like a like a mini head and shoulders, or it's a triple top basically. But uh, um, buyers, lack of buyers, lack of buyers, sellers looking for the move back down to the top of this. And if there's enough selling there, or you know, here's our little pullback. You just, you just can't make this stuff up, right? Here's this structure. Here's this structure. Okay, right. Uh, and then here's back down into this and bottom of that range in here. Okay, so um, anyway, just uh, uh, looking for the order flow within it, though. That's uh, really the key here. All right, and, the, and we kind of read that shift and change. We knew that we used our imbalance indicator. We noted there was more sellers in here. We looked at CVD as well. Uh, <laughs> and um, uh, I thought we'd get the bounce off of 31 and then come back up and trade to 40. This is where we, that whole idea changed. Okay. And then we noted these areas. Well, we noted them kind of a little, a little uh, behind schedule. But uh, um, anyway, we we're still, we were still looking. We, we did not like this buying in here. It just wasn't that convincing. Yeah, I mean, here's your shoulder, head, shoulder as well. And again, you, you have to understand why these repeat. Uh, and, um, uh, you know, it, it, it's due to the it's due to the, the trader's behavior uh, in the order flow. It's all in here. And that behavior just repeats. 
and that's where you know it's nice to get into some of these people like uh, Wyckoff who uh, you know noticed this long 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 time ago we can visualize it though very nicely in here in bookmap uh, the um, uh, of, of, of uh, accumulation markup distribution markdown okay we're in markdown phase right now okay so we saw our distribution and now we're in markdown Uh, well, we traded down to 20, uh, Her Haney, okay, yeah. <laughs> we traded down to um, uh, 20, a little bit below. Um, uh, still still see just a you know bunch of sellers, so still looking for sellers. Uh, this is, we're already testing where sellers came in here, okay. So, uh, uh, but let's see, they may, they may break it now. We, we're starting to see some buying interest come in a bit, but uh, up, up maybe to here, okay, around our, well, almost our 26 and a half level, a little bit lower. Okay. And uh, yeah, I mean, uh, this could be the beginning of maybe a, a accumulation uh, in here. And that's when you see start to see these deeper pullbacks in here. Okay, deeper pullbacks. Uh, but, uh, uh, you know, we're, we're still sell side, basically. I mean, we just see there's more sellers in here still. A lot of icebergs starting to buy down here. That helps with the accumulation, of course. Nice stop run in here. All right, let me jump back here. Um, uh, Bert, I, I jumped over to the Z contract. Uh, it, it It's just about to roll. I mean, you know, it's really funny. Like, uh, you can see precisely. Um, <laughs> I'm, again, I, I'm just rather fascinated by this. Um, we'll just do a quick Google search here for volume. Uh, CME volume ES, click on the contract. We'll go to the contract spec. You see it still says uh, ESU here. That'll change by tomorrow, I'm, I'm pretty sure. Uh, we we'll go to, uh, no, I'm sorry. They will probably, CME will probably cha not change it until it's actually expired, uh, which will be Friday. I, I don't know. We'll see what they do. Um, I imagine that's what they'll do. Uh, but uh, now what we want to look at, though, under volume and open interest here, uh, we want to scroll down here and we want to look at the flows in here. See how it's very close here in, in total volume? It's it's gonna it's gonna flip today. Okay, it'll probably flip in another couple of hours. And you'll see, I I, I encourage you keep your uh, ESU uh, two uh, symbol open uh, and then take a look at it in a couple of hours when the volume flips here. Okay, to the new contract. It, you'll see like how it just the liquidity just changes as well. So it just means, and, and it just, Bookmap is visualizing it. The participants in that auction have abandoned that, you know, the, there's more volume in the other one, and they're not willing to trade the U contract any longer. Uh, guys, w one thing we really want to note um, in this kind of um, Wyckoffian uh, um, concept here uh, <laughs> uh, 
is looking for the markup and the markdown periods. Those are a lot easier uh, to follow. Uh, and, uh, uh, and, and you know, stay with it uh, until, you, you know, you see a, a, a distribution or, or, or something else uh, start to unfold. Distribution or accumulation. Okay, it, it's so much easier to go with that, and this this is this can be confusing. I I think we did a pretty good job of, of recognizing it, um, but uh, uh, you know it's back it's it's back and forth etc. And then you know we're looking for um, someone uh, well that markdown period, okay? and I think we're still in markdown, but starting to see some buying interest in here okay and now we're recognizing see how we pulled right back to this area here guys we this is before it pulled back to this i i believe we marked this up and we marked this area up here too okay Let's just edit it and move it across. It's a little bit higher maybe here, kind of a zone. Okay, let's see it. Let's see if we get sellers below here, right? Buyers here, sellers down below, and then the move maybe down to 20 again down here. Let's see it, sellers. There they go. Boom. Okay, still looking for lower. 17 and a half, maybe 15 and a quarter. Okay, so yep, still sticking with it until we see something different, right? And it, it might, it might turn into that something different. This might be the head, the reverse head and shoulders. This might be the head. Now we need to see buyers come in and move it right back up to here, basically 23 and a half. All right, we don't know that, but and we, that's why we just we stick with what we do know until we see something different. You know, so <coughs> anyway, now we can get into trade management uh, on on all of this in here in so many different ways. Uh, you know, it depends on when what. <laughs> it depends on how much money you have. What is your time frame? What are you trading? You know, what instrument, what time of day. Uh, there's so many different factors in here. You know, that's why we're just going through order flow. Uh, you can save those questions for, for JTrader and for Scott. All right, sellers, let's see if you can break it. Take it one more lower here. See, so, you know, it it exhausted out, and we get buyers back up here, but uh, we're still we're still in a in a negative structure. Okay, quite a bit of buying though.
Okay, quite a bit of buying. All right. Okay, buyers. So now we, we were still looking for sellers, still looking for sellers, noted the buying. Now the buyers have come in. Okay, so now we get a little bit of a pullback. Now looking for the buyers to come up to here, top of the range. Okay, test where we had our sellers here, 24. Okay, maybe now they've got enough buying pressure to come up higher, looking for 26 as well up here. All right, so now, now we're looking for that. Okay, we weren't until we got here and then we started to see these buyers come in. Now we're looking for the move up into the top and uh, test up here. Let's see if they can get up a little bit higher here. You can kind of you can kind of see the shift here in that order flow. See so, yeah, how this this is like, <coughs> I mean, I, I I thought the buy. I mean, we did come up kind of near the top of the range. We're we're actually still in a negative structure even with this buying in here. Um, they did not make a higher high in here, um, but uh, we're we're noting this in here. Now this is what we're kind of talking about before. Uh, I mean, sellers are basically still in control, right? But we're starting to see see the distribution or the accumulation in here. Okay, so we saw the distribution earlier. Now we're seeing some, you know, we're seeing some buyers. A little bit of buying here, but this is this is really good buying in here. Okay, so uh, uh, and now here's a bit of sellers, and here come the buyers back in. Okay, great. So now, now on this move, if we're going to see like a mark up period, we're looking for buyers to trade up to at least top of the range at 24, and then uh, up to our 26 level here. So you know, I, I've been well. We've been we've been talking. We've been holding these webinars for a long, long time uh, here in at Bookmap. Uh, you know, talking about uh, order flow, and uh, y you guys can hear that. You know, this new kind of direction here with Wyckoff, or you know, understanding different things in here. Just trying to use like something maybe that's more relatable to you guys um, uh, to kind of maybe uh, uh, understand this a bit better. You know, we can look at candlesticks, etc. We were looking at candlesticks like you know a month or two ago, uh, and going through that, reading candles, and then looking for the flow to to go a certain way. Yeah, I, I kind of like the the buy side now. Um, and uh, let's see if we can get back up here, 22. And then uh, I want to see that bid really light up in, underneath here. And then uh, I think we can get back up to 24 and 26. Yeah, see the bid here? See how that helps? Kind of push this a bit. And we found reaction to that was buyers. Okay, still looking for them to take it higher here. Yep, Simon. Uh, yep, the sellers are up here at twenty twenty-five. So we're at our twenty-four level. Okay, and uh, we might get a pullback here. Another again, you know, kind of this this accumulation um, and back and forth in here. Maybe sellers bring it back down to here, around twenty-one. Okay, but we're starting to see the flow kind of change uh, with buyers and sellers. 
and we don't know like uh, uh here here is more buyers at a higher area so there's still more buyers here great well then now it's more likely we'll get to 25 and then and then they'll be able to push maybe up to to this this level up here 26 right whereas when we don't know that you know it, it's it's possible we get another rotation back and forth in here before we get this in this case there was just more buyers in here so they're going to move it immediately okay does that i hope that helps simon uh you know see look at them supporting it underneath on the bid now as well but are we getting what's the reaction to this liquidity under here right they're also on the offer here so we're starting to see kind of a, a you know a, a bit of a battleground starting to kind of form here you know are we going to get our deeper pullback now maybe back back down to here you know or maybe to the top of the range or maybe just to this little range here these are our areas for lo looking for pullbacks and, and looking to see if we still get more buyers. Okay, so uh, we want to look at here, here, and here for a pullback. Uh, Captain Price, I mean, it's about is what time frame you're trading. I mean, you know, in, in these webinars, our, our goal here is to go through as much as we can um, so that uh, these the markets are fractal. They can apply to any uh, time frame, right? So, um, <coughs> yeah, rollers are not very nice to experience, Pro K. Agreed. Um, but, uh, yeah, we're, we're, we're getting, we, I mean, they're, it's given us something here uh, pretty good, I think, to read here. Now, now, guys, I mean, like, you know, I know there's more buyers in here, but the market gave me what I was looking for up here. Okay, so, yeah, I would take partial up here. A partial profit. I would scale out. I would move my stop up. We're still, you know, looking for a potential pullback as well. But, uh, uh, you know, I don't, I don't know if this was enough. Was this enough to get to get us out of this jam here, of this kind of back and forth. Oh, anyway, our, our, what I was getting at was, our, you know, what time frame are you trading? You know, are you way zoomed out like this? Are you still long? Yeah, well, you have good reason to be. I mean, look at all, look at all this. Look at this very strong move away from this whole area here. Uh, Simon, so what what time frame are you talking about? More sellers and buyers right now? Well, there's a bit of selling in here. Yeah, above the bid, the heat map. Yeah, always looking at that. What's you know, are how much is up here? Uh, are they pulling? Are they adding? Always. Okay, look, look on the bid in here. There is a little bit on the bid. It's not much. You know, sellers can can drop it down here really quickly into these areas here. Okay, we're, we're still seeing more buying pressure though, right? We're back up here. We had a little bit of selling in here. Okay, again, look at the context in here. Maybe it's easiest to look at the bars, but you can also look at the dots. I like looking at both. Um, you know where where is it trading is what I get in the in the dots okay, at higher highs I want to see that higher highs lifting the offer right so in in here here we go okay so now we're getting into our markup phase here okay 
Um, so yeah, anyway, what uh, uh, I was going to say here is the, um, uh, look at this context in here, Simon. Okay, so look at these bars, for example, and then look at, you said sellers are just coming in now. Here's our context. Okay, so compare that to this over here. So this is more like a pullback. Okay, it looks pretty good though, right? It looks looks like you know a lot of selling in here. Likely these sellers in here are getting stopped out here, along with a lot of other people. Okay, nice move. Continue. This is you know our markup period. Um, now. <coughs> Again, let's take a look at the structure in here. We've come up come up to these sellers up here, uh, high volume node as well. I, I do kind of, uh, you know, I I, I I love volume profile. I, I just don't um, uh, follow it that closely. Uh, you know, come to Tom's webinar uh, directly after this in another like ten minutes or so or five minutes, uh, and he'll, he's he goes through. He's an expert in volume profile, uh, and you you can learn a lot from Tom on volume profile. I, I love it. Uh, I just like reading the order flow first, uh, and then looking at uh, you know these things like high volume nodes, low volume nodes. You know where is it trading also in the profile? Um, I don't know. There's a lot of things I I, I also don't like about profile um, that um, uh, it doesn't give you the vertical very well. Uh, it gives you the horizontal really nicely, but it's aggregated <laughs> again. That the the, the a word. Um, is a is a bad word the aggregation right so it's aggregated here we don't know what it looks like in the vertical in this area in here right we just don't know we don't have access to it uh, in a profile right this is what we and what i mean by vertical is is precisely this in here the buyers taking control moving that market okay can you see that in the profile here i cannot I cannot. Now, this is volume profile. You, you'll be able to actually see this in um, uh, market profile, though. You, you will. You'll, you'll see your, your letters in here, you know, mo moving that market higher. Okay, for the different periods. Uh, and I, I like that. Uh, so that gives me kind of another added uh, level uh, instead of just aggregated volume here. Uh, you're talking about the seller. You're talking about on the offer up here, Simon, at 41.30. Well, again, like it's it's the this context in here, right? So we know they're on the offer up here. Do buyers want it though? Okay. Well, here we're starting to see that they want it, so they're going after it. Right now, do they stay in the order book and get filled? They sh they sh they sure did here. No, I should take that back. Some of it did, and some of it didn't. Okay. And then see how see how at thirty they pulled. So there's our context. These guys really don't want to sell. All right. So we're still in markup period now. Okay, I, is that clearer, Simon, about context? I, it, that I, I really, I, boy, the A word and the C word, um, <laughs> uh, aggregation and context. Um, you know, the, the, the C word is like, uh, it's so easy to just kind of blame, or not blame it, but just like uh, write it off as context. But really, what it, it, it's really true, though, we really need to read the context. Uh, there's aggressors in here. They're going after this liquidity and they're starting to, some of it's getting filled, but they're starting to pull that liquidity away from the market. They do not want to be uh, sellers anymore or less so. Some of it traded up here. Okay, so that, that is the context. 
Uh, and uh, now this context on the uh, on the bid in here, well, th this and and you can see it in here on the offer in here. This is something different. This is during that rollover period. Uh, you'll see it. See how they're just kind of uh, you know it's kind of positioned in queue uh, algos. Okay, so that's what makes rollover a little more challenging. Okay, that you don't you don't see as much kind of you know speculation or or you know traders that are committed in some of these areas here seen in the book uh, let's see moy a uh, how do you put a window back in the main okay that's easy so if you want to pop it out here uh, like let's say you want to pop out the uh, nasdaq okay double click on it pops out okay just to close it here right uh, this will put it into the main tabbed group here. So if I close it, see how it pops it back in at the end here. And then you can just left click hold and drag it back over to where you were. All right. Does that answer your question, Moy? Yeah, it's kind of a funny uh, interface in that sense. Yeah, because it, it, it feels like you're going to close the instrument, but you're just closing it uh, and, and putting it back into the tab. Now, if you close it here, if you click on the X button here, though, you will close it. And it asks, do you want to subscribe, unsubscribe? You can unsubscribe or you can keep it. You know, if I keep it, it stays. Okay, guys, so actually a pretty good webinar today, uh, I think. You know, looking at markup, markdown, uh, distribution, accumulation, uh, how to read that context, uh, and then uh, and we're seeing that follow through here. Okay, now let's just go. We'll go back and again, like that's why we're looking at all these little details in here. It's not that we we trade low time frames, or you can only use Bookmap for low time frame trading. Uh, you can look at your bigger picture here, and now look at your context again in here. Right. Look at the the bars. Look at the dots and where they're trading, uh, and then look at the context in here. So it's a lot of selling in here. So maybe it just goes back and forth in this area here, you know, the rest of the day, waiting for CPI data tomorrow. You know, we don't know, uh, but that's a possible scenario due to the volume in here, uh, and also the order book. You know, between 40 and uh, well, that that 20 level they they bought down here. Uh, so uh, we're kind of back up in the middle of the of that area now, and back up into a high volume node, right? So, uh, uh, but uh, you know, let's just read that context again. So, um, if we get enough buyers in here, right? Look, we're looking for 40, okay, or maybe even 50. There's not much up here at 50, but there will be, uh, I imagine, if we can get up there. If we if we get start to get into 40, they'll they'll start to put liquidity at 50. The big figures or or half figures here are always pretty pretty important. All right, let's see here. What else? I hope that helps, Simon. I want to try I'm trying to get that uh, some of this across uh, to you. You've got some good questions in here. You want me to look at the NQ? Yeah, we gotta. We can quickly look at it. We, we got to get going here, but uh, I, I do want to show something though. Like uh, we will have. I haven't created the webinar yet, um, but uh, so uh, if a lot of you guys might have signed up, we, we're having a trading competition uh, for the um, Coinbase Pro. It's with Tradeavate. Uh, you will open it up. You've opened up account. It's already closed um, for those that. Um, uh, we're able to register in time, uh, <laughs> which we, 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 we let you know uh, Friday about all of that, uh, that uh, it was Sunday evening at midnight, basically, was the last moment. Now it's cut off. Uh, however, we're going to do some education at 2 p.m. East Coast time. All right, so uh, look for that if you want to come in, uh, even if you're not part of the, the competition. Uh, it will be in the book map or BM Trade of 8 um, uh, a voice channel in Discord, okay, uh, and we'll go through 
uh, all sorts of different stuff, kind of similar to this. Uh, but, uh, you know, it's a trading competition, so we're going to do more of a breakdown uh, in there. And uh, I, I think we, we're going to do an open mic as well, so people have questions or, you know, want to uh, um, <coughs> have something to say in there. All right. So look for that. I, I can show you at least here on Discord where it is. Uh, so uh, uh, just come to our Discord in here. If you scroll all the way to the top here, click on Events. Uh, and then it's right here, trading competition, Bitcoin trading competition breakdown. All right. So that'll be at 2 p.m. in this room here. So if you guys on YouTube want to come to that uh, and then uh, tomorrow morning, uh, 9 a.m., we have a special event here. We did this before. It is only in German. Uh, we do have subtitles that, you know, afterwards uh, will be in English. But uh, uh, Oliver uh, is an excellent trader. Uh, German trader, so it's going to be in German. Uh, come to that if you're uh, uh, you want to learn from from Oliver. All right, uh, and uh, yeah, other than that, uh, look for Tom B. He should have been starting uh, just about now. All right, so uh, guys, we'll uh, call it a day. Thanks for coming, everybody. Uh, uh, take a look at uh, uh, the um, webinar later today. It's going to be all week at 2 p.m. Come to that ask questions uh, and we'll do some uh, uh, you know look at some breakdowns in uh, in the Bitcoin uh, futures okay all right yeah take care have a good day bye bye